get no rest No, no I've been down so It's louder now, and I got my tuner on it. Whoop, whoop. Today, let's talk about pride. Why? Because pride comes up a lot in the MC culture, in the MC world. That is a, a big issue, ego and pride. Bible says, and I'm not familiar with the verse off the top of my head, but the Bible does say, the greater the pride, the greater the fall. I think that's true. I love riding with my bros and my brothers. You know, and that's really, pride is the whole point about prospecting, is learning how to serve, right? If you're learning how to serve, that should be a pride killer. Because you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about others first. And if you're thinking about others first, it makes it kind of hard to be prideful, doesn't it? In my opinion, it's okay to be proud, you know? Like, I'm proud of my family, I'm proud of my club. But it's different to be prideful than it is to be proud. And you know, when it comes to pride, I've seen uh, pride in some people as a result of insecurity, which to me is an interesting thought. So, there's a young man I know who as a child was picked on. You know, he was the, the tall skinny kid, little bean pole. And uh, he was picked on a lot. He grew up in an orphanage, actually. And when he became the big boy on the block, the old one of the older kids, he struggled very much with pride. Matter of fact, the nickname I gave him was the rooster. Because he liked to walk around with his chest puffed out. Look at me, I'm one of the big boys now. So instead of being the B, the B kid, he became the A kid. Became, I don't want to say the alpha male, but he tried to become the alpha male. Which, what, what did that cause? That caused uh, a lot of pride in him. Look at me now. I'm the, I'm the big head honcho. I'm the one in charge. And that's been an issue that this person has been struggling with ever since he became one of the big kids. And, it, and it's a shame. So pride, at some point in time, can be a result of low self-esteem. You know, low value. Of thinking you're never good enough. That's why you always got your butt beat as a kid. But now that you're an adult, now you got to be the big man on campus and, and what happens with him in this particular circumstance is he goes above and beyond the normal to prove his worth, to prove his, you know, his street credibility, I guess you could say for lack of a better term. And it's a shame because he truly has a beautiful heart. He truly is a good person. I saw how he used to interact with his brothers and sisters and I could see the beauty in his heart but uh, the low self-confidence is just such a deeply rooted thing that the only way that he really can overcome that is to boast and to let pride rule the day pride can also be bought, brought about by success in life Look at me, look at how much money I have, look at my job, look at my income, look at the mansions that I have built around me. And just as easy as all that stuff came, all that stuff can go away. As easy as those material possessions came, those material possessions can go. That just kind of hit me today and just wanted to talk about that for a minute, see what your thoughts are. We all know prideful people, right? Some a little bit more prideful than others. Back's looking pretty good today. Got a couple slick backs in the back and a prospect. Guys learning how to, to ride bar to bar, but everybody's looking fairly tight. Looking pretty good. Got my brother Doby next to me. 
you haven't seen his wedding video on my channel, you gotta see that video. I love that man. Yeah, and that goes back to my MC Monday post of four equals two. That man to my right, that man right there, he is family. Two men up in the front, they are family. Those prospects in the middle, they're working at becoming family. <laughs> So Yogi Clan, who do you ride with? And are they your family? What other kind of crazy guys are out there? At? Oh, hey, it warmed up. Look, it's 46 degrees. Are out there riding with their friends at 46 degrees in January. Going out for about an hour. Hopefully we'll end up over at uh, Speedway Harley Davidson, which reminds me, it's an orphan run. In case you missed my announcement about a month ago, around Thanksgiving, orphan run April 10th. Speedway Harley Davidson, Concord, North Carolina. We're going to be riding roads much like this one. Matter of fact, maybe we'll be riding this one. I don't know. Put it on your calendar, y'all. April 10th. Raise some money for Sacred Selections. It's going to be epic. Running Tail Gunner. One of the positions I really enjoy running. But I would highly suggest if you decide to run Tail Gunner, Wear a full face helmet. Otherwise, you're going to be eating all the gravel of the pack in front of you. Yeah. The worst place to run tail gunner is if you live near a beach somewhere and all that sandy soil. Oh my goodness. Running tail gunner in that circumstance just really kind of bites. But around here, it's not quite as bad, but you still get a lot of gravel in the face. So if you're running tail gunner, put your full face on. Wild on Twos just did a video about being tail gunner. Good stuff, too. Suggest you check out that video. I enjoy tail gunner. It lets me look at the pack, see which guys are struggling, what guys are having challenges, how we can make them better riders and help improve their skills. for this cold to go away so one of the things we we're talking about the uh, disciple has a run in Utica New York coming up in March called the groggy bear run a couple of our guys are talking about going up to that and supporting them it's the same weekend as Daytona I don't know Daytona or, or Utica New York I know Daytona will have much less chance for rain for uh, snow <laughs> over Utica, New York. But you know, I haven't been up to New York in a long time. Especially Utica. Might be kind of nice. So in other news, if you remember a different one of my videos of I Hate a Fat Biker, yeah, I've been working on that, Yogi Clan. I really have. I'm hoping that you in this video, well not this video, but in future videos, can see a different yogi. Uh, this is actually, I just completed week three of fasting, of one meal a day. Now, um, I stick to it Monday, Monday through Friday, one meal a day for sure. Two weeks ago I was in Atlanta and that's Saturday and Sunday, yeah, I ate food. Last weekend, I think, Saturday I fasted all day, Sunday... I had lunch and dinner. But I'm, I'm getting pretty darn serious about this OMAD thing. You know what, I really kind of enjoy it too. One thing I did notice is, uh, you know, what used to happen is I would eat lunch. I'm a bread guy, man, I, lo I love me some bread. So a lot of times, you know, like I go to Walmart and hit the deli, get one of their deli sandwiches. Well, about like three o'clock in the afternoon, I'd be devoid of any kind of energy. I just had no energy. 
I'd be falling asleep practically at my desk. You know, since doing fasting, that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so I'm feeling like I got a little bit more energy, which is kind of counterintuitive. You would think that, oh, you know, I always hear like, oh, I need food, you know, I need, I need energy. I have no energy. So I haven't lost a lot of weight yet. I'm probably down about five pounds in three weeks, which isn't huge, you know, it's not big. Um, but I've not, you know, I'm really not hungry. I've not starved myself. And you may be thinking, geez, one meal a day, Yogi, that's starving yourself. You know, I really don't feel that. If I don't eat breakfast, then I'm not really hungry throughout the day. I've tried my best. You know, the hardest thing, though, is once you do eat food, when you get home at the end of the day, once you do eat food, it's hard to try not to binge eat. And you need to control that. And I've been trying to, you know, eat protein first, eat vegetables as much as I can, and really stay away from as much carbohydrates as I can, but try to eat good, solid, home-cooked, balanced meals. And you know what? I've been pretty happy. I've been enjoying it. And I could see using uh, one meal a day, or OMAD as they call it, as, you know, as like a permanent thing. Because, I mean, think about it, right? Back in, back even a hundred years ago, people didn't necessarily eat three square meals a day. You know, think of all the generations before us. You know, once you get past our great grandparents, you know, they didn't necessarily eat three meals a day. They didn't have all that processed crap that we have today. You know, there's, you know, yes, we are a blessed nation and we are blessed to uh, have the abundance of food that we have. But in the same hand, um, I, I think it's also led to the obesity epidemic that we have in America today. Let's face it, man. There, there are, America is one out of shape country, right? Hey, if you doubt me, just go to the mall. Just go to the Walmart. Just go to the grocery store and look around at the people. You know, my wife and I used to joke when we would go to Ukraine. It was the land of the thighs. We're talking about the women. It was the land of the thighs that don't touch. Why is that? Well, you know, Ukraine... As much as I love that country, love it, love it to death. You know, the, the people aren't as, you know, the, the people aren't as wealthy as what you have here in the States. And the people eat less, eat less food than we do here. You know, maybe they don't eat three square meals a day. Or maybe if some of those meals that they eat, maybe they're soups. Or whatever it is that they're eating, um... And, that, and, and they walk a whole lot more than we walk here, too. Let me tell you that, too. They, they walk to the bus stop. They take the train. They take buses. You know, there's a lot more physical movement in that country, you know? When we were there and, and living in an apartment, doing our adoptions, I remember the grocery store was about a three-quarters of a mile away. And, yeah, you know, we would take the bus to the bus stop closest to the grocery store that we could and then we would grab all our groceries and walk home because I didn't feel like taking all that crap on a bus so we would walk home with our groceries three quarters of a mile we did that you know the refrigerator is a whole lot smaller too so we would do that trip you know usually every other day going to the grocery store and we would we would walk like most everywhere we went or take the bus and uh you know when you don't have as much money you know you're not buying as much food the unemployment over there is very high so it's not as wealthy of a country as america so uh eating is a whole lot different now they do eat a whole lot more starchy foods than we do you know potatoes are a lot bigger staple there than they are here you know, pasta is like our big staple here. Potatoes are like their big staple there. But the land of the thighs that don't touch. Sure, there are overweight people in Ukraine. Not saying that. But as a general generality, the, the people are a lot thinner over in Ukraine than they are in America. And that's probably true for many of the countries. We eat just way too much over here. And the, the processed food, I think, is the biggest culprit. You know, I heard... Uh, I did Weight Watchers once and lost 70 pounds with Weight Watchers. But the big go-to saying in Weight Watchers was, when you go to the grocery store, 
the food you should be eating should be around the outside perimeter of the grocery store. You shouldn't be buying anything from the center aisles of the store. Why is that? Because that's, you know, all the processed stuff. But everything around the outside of the store is all your fruits, all your vegetables, all your meats, all your dairy. And yes, for those of you snarky people, the beer is on that side of the store too. So I've been, been enjoying my OMAD journey, so hopefully y'all can see some changes in the next few months. Over the next few months, because yeah, you know that video of I, why do I hate a fat biker, you know. No, I don't hate a fat biker, I just hate myself being a fat biker. Yeah, I got a goal with one of my brothers. See who can get down to 250 before the orphan run. He weighs right about the same as I do. So we're gonna, we're gonna race to see if we can get to 250. So I'm about 269, 268 today. Keith, this is where you turn right, bro. So we'll see. Can y'all hold me accountable? So y'all have an awesome day. We are finishing up our ride, getting ready to pull into Speedway Harley Davidson. I thank you for joining me, Yogi Clan. And I hope you have an awesome weekend coming. Love you guys. Peace. Hey, I know that guy. But my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, dog. Cause the devil's on my trail